All right. We've talked about sequences. What about signal? There are a couple of things that you need to know about signal. So signal really, in a gross way, reflects the pathological progression of the disease. Okay, so this is a, a very grossly simplified uh, slide, but it's a good way of just sort of getting across what you need to know. So with the SPA, as you know, the initial response is inflammation and erosions. Then subsequently with time, you get a healing response. And then eventually you may or may not get ossification. So the imaging findings also will reflect this. If we look at the corresponding imaging changes, when you have inflammation, what you will see on imaging is edema. When you have a healing response, so the inflammation reduces, starts this healing response, that often shows up as fat metaplasia, increased amount of fat deposition in that area of inflammation. And the later stage when you have ossification, what we'll be looking for is new bone formation or ankylosis on imaging. So this is a, a rough guide to how the imaging corresponds with the pathological changes that occur. What do we look for? Although this is a talk about spine, I'm going to show this on sacroiliac joint because the changes are much larger and they're easier to appreciate. But it's exactly the same change that will occur in the spine. So if we're looking for edema, inflammatory changes, the best sequence to assess that on is the T2 fat saturated sequence. So this is like the go-to sequence when you start looking at the scan. Go to the T2 fat saturated se sequence or a stir sequence and look for bright signal. So here we have the sacrum. This is a coronal scan. This is the sacroiliac joint. And you can see that there's really bright signal adjacent to that SIJ. Remainder of the sacrum here is low signal. So that's just normal fat. And on the iliac side, we also have some mildly increased signal. So we've got edema, inflammatory changes present within the bone. Now, if you happen to give contrast, that will enhance. Inflammation usually enhances, but we don't really need to worry about this because it's not common to give contrast. But if we go back to the T1, what you notice is that there is some low signal here compared to the rest of the sacrum. However, you can see how much easier it is to see this inflammation on the T2 fat sat rather than the T1. So this is the best sequence for you to assess edema or inflammation. I suggest you start with that sequence to look for active inflammatory changes. Okay, what about the, when it starts to get the healing type response or the more chronic response? So really what we're looking for is fat metaplasia. And fat metaplasia is the replacement of that area of inflammation with fatty change. So if we go back to this, these are different patients. So we've got this area of intense inflammation. So in this patient, Previously, they would also have had inflammation here, but now on this T1-weighted signal, we've got bright signal. So this is fat, and you can see on the stir sequence, that area is not bright anymore, it's, it's dark. So it tells you that this is fat. So this is fatty metaplasia, and it's an indication of a healing response. There's been previous inflammation here, but has now resolved. We will also look for erosions. We can look for sclerosis. So sclerosis is low signal on all sequences. It's basically dense bone. And then at the end stage, we get ankylosis. If we look at the patient's left SI joint, we can see that there is a joint here. There is erosion, it's irregular, but the joint is still maintained. If we look at the patient's right, we have fat metaplasia. So this increased fat adjacent to the SI joint. But we also have this fat signal, this marrow signal that is going across the joint. There's no normal joint there anymore. And similarly, it's fill, filling with ossification here. So this is the changes of ossification that we will see. We basically see new bone formation, new marrow signal. Okay. So what does Emma tell us about the types of changes? Basically, we can work out from Emma, is there active inflammatory change, so is there active disease, or are the changes more chronic and structural with less active change and more chronic changes which won't resolve. So if we look at active changes, what these are really are active inflammatory changes. You have active disease. And the way it reflects on MR is that we have edema. We have bright T2 fat cell or stir signal. 
And we can see that in the bones or we can see it in the ligaments or both. And what it's telling you is that this is a potentially reversible stage. So they've got active inflammatory changes. Treatment may help to reduce or resolve it. And as we've said, we're going to be looking for edema on the T2 fat saturated sequence. And if we're looking then for structural changes, what we're looking for are erosions, for fat metaplasia, for ankylosis and new bone formation. These are more chronic changes. It can be the bone or the ligaments, and these are irreversible. So once you get erosions, once you get fat and metaplasia or ankylosis, you can't reverse this with treatment. So MR helps you to stratify the changes in way of changes that are active, potentially treatable and reversible, and changes that are chronic and structural and cannot be changed.